Hey what hey all, welcome back to the channel and as this is being recorded during the holidays of 2021 I hope that they're treating you very well. If you're watching this a another time, I hope they did treat you very well and today we're going to be looking at this guy. It is Kingdom Tigatron. In fact, this guy made it this year into the 2021 Hall of Fame as Toy of the Year, Transformer of the Year. Is he that good? Well we're about to find out in the latest Got By True review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at light of my baby, and hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links, all of that's in the description down below. If you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. And this is Kingdom Tigatron, or well, this is his packaging. And I'd heard that he was good. Now, I was not a fan at all of Cheetor. I thought that it was over-engineered for the size that it was with the thinned out plastic. And I have often compared that to Universe Galvatron. Should have been bigger, or at least the plastic should have been heftier. But I heard only good things about Tigatron. And then I heard that in the vote for the 2021 Transformers Hall of Fame, that this guy was going to go in with uh, the other entrants that have gone in in the past for Toy of the Year. Is he that good? Is he really that good? Is it that much of an improvement over the very lackluster Cheetor? Well, we're about to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And as it feels like we are winding down with the entire War for Cybertron trilogy series, especially Kingdom, we take a look at this guy. Of course, this is Voyager class. Tigatron, this is the main release of this guy. This is also a Hall of Fame inductee for 2021. This went in as Toy of the Year. Is it that good? Or is it that he just came out at the right time so people got caught up in the hype? I don't know. We're about to find out. But just as uh, kind of a reiteration of things, just to kind of give some, some perspective here, character of the year that went in this year was Inferno. I believe that was Beast Wars Inferno. Um, the humans who went in this year, 2021, was uh, John Mashita and Guido Guidi. I have no idea if I'm saying his name right. But in terms of Toy of the Year, that was a category that started in 2017. Trypticon was the first inductee. In 2018, it was Battle Trap. In 2019, it was Omega Supreme. In 2020, it was Skylinks. And now in 2021, it's this guy. I don't know if he's that good. We'll see. We'll see. But before we can get into him, you know what we have to do? We have to take a look at that packaging first. And yes, indeed, we do have some very nice packaging. We have Tigatron as a tiger on the front, as a white tiger, no less. And here is his robot mode here, how he's flaying, flailing his uh, whip tail. Over here, just our usual stuff and things. And on the back, of course, the product images. Nothing special. It's pretty cool. Oh, they sure do got instructions. Um, either you like them or you don't. I mean, it is what it is. I have found these to be all right for the most we part. We got ourselves a Megatron collector card. And this one, the fate was him uniting Cybertron under Decepticon rule. Apparently. He comes with his nicely sculpted and shaped and painted tail flail and... His gut gun, the same sort that Cheetor should have. Um, it's okay. The pink gut pieces back here should also be painted up kind of in between there. Um, they could have added a little bit more just to make it eh, just a little more accurate. But it's pretty and good. And now that we've gone through all of that, we can finally get into our bot boy here. Uh, naturally, here he is, and here he is next to the little cat. Big cat and little cat. This scaling works well. I think that this actually looks pretty nice for the most part. I have said all along that my first Cheetor crumbled to pieces. Uh, I feel like the plastic was thinned out too much on Cheetor, and I feel like the engineering was better suited to a Voyager size. Or at least Cheetor shouldn't have been 61 grams. At least keep the uh, plastic a bit thicker. Even if, it, even if he wasn't the full traditional 84 grams of a 
uh, del traditional deluxe. I mean, even if he was mid-70s, I, I just think he would have felt a little more robust for the engineering that went into Cheetor. The engineering's fine. It's just the plastic was too thinned out. So I was thinking to myself, maybe it works better on Tigatron. But before we get to talking about his mass and his engineering, here he is also next My to My custom painted version of his original self. There's some touch-ups done here, especially on the forearms. That was a mix of like a brown and a white, basically. Uh, down on the lower legs where I put in the teal, I did leave his uh, like leg spikes out. By rights, this section down here should have also been painted, but the feet should be white. So since the feet were automatically this tealy color, I left up here white. That was a bit inaccurate. Um, him not being a stark white, Apparently, I always thought it was just like, why did they choose this weird color? Apparently, it's an homage, and it's the same reason that there's kind of um, fur coloring done on this guy just a little bit, that yellowing. Apparently, that's done as an homage to the, uh, like, I guess, actual white tiger whose fur isn't necessarily like snow white. It does tend to have tinges of, I'll say, regular colored tiger fur in there or patches so to speak so I think that that was the intention here and it's the intention here um, interesting little tidbit that I didn't know till I started doing some research on this guy I love the original it, it, for a deluxe I always thought it was a bit too small the head sculpt certainly wasn't quite correct but it's robust I've never felt like I'm gonna break anything on it uh, everything incorporates quite nicely I really like that original and I looked at him a long time ago in episode 476, man. Oh, buddy. Speaking of Cheetor, that is the Netflix Cheetor that I just showed with a bunch of custom paint work done on him. I looked at that Cheetor in episode 833. And just for funsies, I looked at my custom painted original Cheetor. But this is why I'm not going to look at the reissue that, like, is just coming out now. Because I did look at that mold. I did look at the original Cheetor mold in episode 475. I'll probably put some cards or something up along so you can check out all of that because who knew that an old uh, Beast Wars Cheetor review would be apropos again this day and age. So enough about old molds. Let's talk about the toy of the year or the apparent toy of the year for the Transformers Hall of Fame. So in terms of looks for the guy, man, he looks great. I'm going to say for a version of Cheetor, he's got to be somewhere around a solid 9. No, he's not a perfect 10. Why? Well, the little spikes down here on his legs, they should still be white. Uh, the little cuff just above his foot, that should be uh, green as well, and it's not. Um, I think that might be it, though. Um... I already mentioned the gut gun missing, like, just a couple of, just slightly missing a couple of paint apps. Nothing major by any stretch of the imagination. So, uh, the, the cough and the gut gun, I think that's about it, really. Uh, some people think that his forearms uh, and his, I guess his thigh pads should be silver. I don't really think that there's so much silver, though maybe they are. But I really like the pearlescent paint on the forearms and on the upper thighs. I think that the pearlescent white paint, I'm assuming it's paint, um, works better. Like, I find that it works better than just, a, a, like, a normal, typical silver. There's something that looks special. There's something that does, in fact, look premium about it. I love this head sculpt, and I love the sheen on the green that's used. Had they just used that same, maybe, pearlescent on the spikes on the leg... And had they just made the cuff green, I would say he's a 10. Oh, and the little pinky pieces in between the slots. If that had been pink, this guy would be a 10. So he's really close. He's a 9. Solid start. Honestly, a solid, solid start. In terms of the articulation for the guy, uh, well, the head goes left, right. Not really any up and down, like a little up and down wiggle, but left, right. Uh, the arms, they can go... Up, down, out to the side, double elbow to get full uh, bend. We have wrist rotation. Um, again, like it can't go all the way around because of the leg piece here or the body piece here. Uh, but I do like the, the double elbow and I do like that the hinge in there, the elbow hinge, is the color it should be. Uh, we do have a waist, which is very nice. We do have legs kicking all the way forward, which is very nice. Uh, back that far. Uh, I guess you could probably fake it till you make it a bit. You could do the rotation. 
you could uh, get 90 degrees at the knee for sure. There's a little bit of a heel spur that can move, uh, and we do have ankle tilt all the way in, which is very, very nice. I, I think that articulation-wise, he pretty much has m most, certainly most, of what I would want. Uh, I do wish the head could move a little touch more dynamic, but that's a minor gripe. Uh, and the tail, you can leave that on in this mode if you're so inclined. Again, not absolutely perfect. I would say, again, we're looking at about a 9. The head, it'd be nice if that could move just a little bit, and it would be nice if the actual front of the foot could move like forward and back a bit more. Now, it can for transformation, but like you're moving the whole ankle with it. Um, very, very, very minor things. So definitely a 9, maybe even a 9.5. Right now, we're going to kind of split the difference, say a 9.25, uh, because here's the thing. We will also touch on articulation when we go to his other mode, his alt mode, of course. So, right now, about a 9.25. Pretty darn good and pretty darn strong. His mass is 107 grams. He is a smaller uh, Voyager, for sure. One of the smallest Voyagers. Uh, but, he is still significantly bigger than what a deluxe should be. He falls in the category of being one of those characters where he's not quite a true Voyager, but he's definitely much more than a deluxe. So he kind of falls in between, and naturally they would go with the, the higher price point. I don't, I don't mind when they give up some mass, as long as it's in the ballpark. Now, I mean, a traditional Voyager, for those not in the know, is usually, depending on paint and parts count and stuff, and engineering and whatnot, ranges between 144, 145, and 165. So this guy is definitely smaller, as was Primal. And I said Primal passed at 132 because of the severely molded in detail and how all of the swivel um, hinges and whatnot worked like butter on him, at least on my copy. So I did give him a pass. This is much the same sort of thing, except now he's a bit even lower in terms of mass. I struggle to say that this guy's worth the full asking price. Here's why. I do think that there's things here to its credit. Absolutely. So the mass, that's down a bit. So what makes up for it? Uh, no hollowness on the guy. Not on the thighs, not on the legs. Some might say, well, what about the back of his legs here? That's kind of hollow, but not really because there's a panel for transformation that goes back here. It doesn't really cover in the whole leg per se, but there is something more there than just hollowness. Um, the arms, the thighs, they're all good. Uh, I, I like that there's a significant amount of paint and molding on the guy. The tiger mode looks great. I would have liked to have seen the inside of the tiger mouth, specifically the tongue, painted like a red. I would have liked to have seen the claws on the tiger probably painted black. I shouldn't have to do that. Um, and I would have liked to have seen like the pink kind of put in right there and the green down here. So if they had added a few more paint apps, I think I'd be far more forgiving uh, in terms of the mask department. As it is, yeah, he's going to get a pass because he's really good, but it's barely, man. Like, it's getting too... That's getting that's getting to be too little product for the price point. i got to be honest. We're very much teetering on it there. Now, let's talk about the transformation, though, because the guy is getting a 9.25, which is pretty excellent. I detest the transformation of Cheetor, so let's see how better or worse this one is. Let's begin with taking, the, of course, the gut gun out of his hand. We're going to make sure that the tail here is put in this way. I wouldn't leave it this way for robot mode because of the way it angles. It would kind of be like, you know, down here and it's just, it doesn't look right is all. Um, let's do the back legs first because they're definitely the easiest. We're going to kind of push that panel from behind the leg out. We're going to fold in the heel spur and put the foot all the way up. We're going to bring this leg down and then we bend at the knee and this stays up as like part of the body. Just like it did with Cheetor. So this should be extremely familiar. And I sincerely think that this engineering was done for Tigatron first. And they said, hey, let's apply it to Cheetor and downsize it. I, I honestly feel like that's what happened and I don't think it worked as well for Cheetor. So that's the back of this guy done. Um, then we come to the arms here, which I'm going to kind of just get up out of the way for now. And we're going to come to the side of the body and open that out and bring it back. And you heard it kind of tab into place there on the body. We're going to come to the side of the body over here and open it out. And when we bring it back, 
it really kind of tabs up into part of the body. And then we come to the arms. Uh, now for the arms, we have a double elbow. Using the, I think it's the bottom hinge. Yeah, it is the bottom hinge. You should be able to kind of bend the arm up like that and fold it out to tab into the side. Same over here, we use the bottom hinge, not the top hinge. We bring it up and then we should be able to, assuming we've, see I used the top hinge there by accident, my mistake. Using the bottom hinge, we bring that out and it tabs in. Wonderful. Now all we really have to deal with is the head section. On Cheetor, that is not good. Really, really not good. Actually, I, I, the, shout out to Master Fire. I'm going to show you something with Cheetor in a second uh, so we can see the two cast together that helps with that head transformation a little bit. So, we bring up this whole section. comes up much nicer than it did on Cheetor. We open out the face and we fold in the entire Tigertron head and bring this up over and we bring this all the way up around the back. Next, we should be able to take the body pieces, I'll say, and they come down around the side here and around the side here. I like to get these out of the way and then I push all of this together until it all snaps together in a nice... Uh, clean fashion and then we bring the paw down and we bring the paw down and boom in the end in essence here we have Tigatron in his tiger mode. Okay so just out of interest and note I'm gonna put his head back here. The he uh, like cat head goes down over a peg. The peg is pretty big. Now I've opened out the sides of his body already and you should now be able to pick the the head up. Shaving this peg down helps tremendously with the ease of being able to take this head from the sides and pick it up, which it really needs because it's paper thin plastic up here needs to go up over. This one's already a little bit cracked, but it does tremendously, tremendously help with both bringing the head up and putting it back down. This peg seems like it's too long. Shout out to Master Fire. He's the one who put me on to shaving this down. He did it with... Um, uh, Shadow Panther, but it certainly works for Tigatron as well. Uh, but in the end, here we have Big Cat and Little Cat. And again, this scale I think works very nicely. Speaking of Big Cat, I mean, this looks nice. Again, this yellowing-ish is supposed to be indicative of the fur of the real animal. These can go out to the side. They can angle forward a little bit. They can go all the way around. We have the feet that can move or the paws. We have like an elbow, basically. The tail of mine's a little bit loose and likes to pop out. Um, but that's just a tolerance issue. There's an, a hinge here. The leg can move out to the side. Uh, of course, we have like a knee back here again or a knee in. Uh, the feet, again, they can move. The head is pretty static, can't move, though the jaw can open and close. I wish the head could move a little bit more. The only two things here that I feel like should have been engineered a bit better. Again, if they had just put in a slight amount of extra TLC, this too would go a long way in helping to forgive the, um, the loss of mass. The hinge up here, I'm not sure why they made this green. I guess for look in robot mode, but it's too bad because it's, it's kind of like with uh, Rhinox, like it's kind of jarring being there. Um, I don't mind the green on the back. I do wish that they'd done that pearlescent paint. It would have kind of hid the green on the back a bit, but for robot mode, it would have let the green stay there for accuracy. And like the gut, like, come on guys, really? Come on. You couldn't incorporate that somehow here, somewhere, or up there or something. Like there wasn't a better way to do the gut gun. It feels like it was an afterthought and I, that's unfortunate. I would say the transformation for this is infinitely better than it was for uh, Cheetor. Just because the materials and the plastic feel more robust. I'm going to say that the transformation here is about... Eh, it's about, again, a nine overall, I'm going to say. Oh, and with the articulation here, it's not bad. Again, the head not being able to move is a little bit of a bummer, but that's that's really it. The rest of this is pretty good. Overall, I'm going to say that this guy is a solid nine, 9.25. It's pretty terrific. Is it my favorite of the line? Is it my favorite of 2021? 
Well, I guess we'll see when we actually do the countdown. Do I think it's worth Toy of the Year? Do I think it should have taken that category and been in the company of the likes of Trypticon and Omega Supreme and Skylinks, for example? I don't know. I mean, I guess that is somewhat subjective. I, I don't think he's the one I would have personally voted for, but he is definitely a strong contender. And here we are, and here he is, and, like, he's good. There's no doubt about it. Like, I think for a lot of fans, myself included, as a Beast Wars fan, this is definitely uh, the size and the look of a Tigatron that I've been waiting for for a long, long time. By the way, I didn't show him with Air Razor, but she looks splendid next to him for the record. Um, yeah, this is about the right size. Now, like I said in the review, he has lost a significant amount of mass for what a Voyager usually is. And there is a lot of nice molded in detail and a ton of paint on the guy. I really think just to put it over the top, just a little bit of the pearlescent on the, the spikes on his legs, a little bit more of that metallic uh, tealy green down right there on the cuff, just a couple of minor things could have really helped to put this over the top as the quintessential, the ideal Tigatron. As he is, he's very good. He's a solid nine. He could have, with just a couple of little paint apps, probably teetered on being a 9.75, if not a 10. Do I think it is good enough to be the uh, entrant for Toy of the Year? Um, man, I don't know. I don't know. And as of this recording, I have not done my own personal top 10 best and worst of 2021. Though the fan voted top 10 best from the War for Cybertron trilogy was done here on the channel. This guy didn't make it uh, on the list of the top 10 best War for Cybertron. Will he make it on my personal top 10 for 2021? Will he make it on the fan voted top 10 for 2021? Is he, according to the fans, really worth being the toy of the year? I guess we will see. Uh, he's great. I feel like he got the votes he did in support of going into the Hall of Fame because he is a version that a lot of people have been waiting for and because he was like just coming out around that time or just about to come out around that time. Some black claws, uh, a red tongue in tiger mode and the little bit of leg detail would have really put this guy over to the top as he is on oh, the bit of pink on his gut gun and incorporating the gut gun better. Um, very niggly little things. He is tremendous and would I recommend him? Absolutely I would. Do I think he's overpriced? Um, Slightly, slightly, uh, but I still think he's worth it if you are a Tigatron fan like I am. I appreciate you guys coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use that donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course hit the join button right here on YouTube become a channel member. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there, man, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights, at the stop motion premieres, or the old fashioned way, right here, inside the videos.